In this video, we'll be showing you how to add media to a page. We'll learn how to associate a media object with text, insert an inline image into the body of a page, and set the book's cover image, what we call the splash page, with a full page image. Okay, um, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to insert your media objects onto your pages. So now you've built up a library. Um, that's good because you can't insert media onto your pages without first adding it to your library in the dashboard. So now that you have some media content, let's actually go into a page. So to find a page, I'm gonna go to content, pages, and then I'm gonna use historical hauntings here. <clears throat> and um, um, to edit the page, again, you're going to use this pencil to the right-hand side. If you hover over these, you'll notice that it, it does give you an indication of what this button does, which can be a helpful reminder. So here I am. Um, there are a couple of different ways to insert your media objects actually onto your pages. And the first one and the one that I use definitely the most often is the um, linking option. So I'm gonna highlight text um, and I'm gonna insert media using this first button, insert scalar media link. Um, and what this does is it basically anchors um, your media object that you insert to some text, which can be really helpful if you have a bunch of different media objects that you're adding to a page and it just keeps pushing the next media object down the page um, and further away from the actual narrative text that's, that's um, relevant to that media object, um, it can be helpful to link the two. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So highlight some text, insert media object, and I'm going to pick um, haunting. And then you see that you'll get this little media formatting options menu that comes up. I'm going to choose medium. You can choose the size of your media object, where you want it on the page, right or left and um, how much information to include beneath it in terms of a caption. I think this is pretty good. Um, Megan, later on, we'll talk about what this annotations is later on in the workshop today. So for now, I'm okay with that. And um, down here, I'm gonna show you the other, um, before I show you what this actually looks like on the page, I'm gonna show you one more option. Um, let's do here. Um, and that's what this second box is. This is insert inline. Um, I almost never use this option because I think it's a little clunky. Essentially, it gives you the option to drop a media object around where your cursor is. Um, so it's not gonna link it to the text. Um, so let's do, let's see, what do I have? This film, small is fine. Um, you have the option to wrap the text around the media, which I think usually looks better. So I'm going to do that and OK. And it looks kind of funny on the back end, but you'll see in just a moment when we look at it that it really doesn't look that funny on the front end after the media loads. So here's this one. You can play it right on the page. And here's my image over here. Remember, I set that one to be medium, so it's a little bit bigger. So you'll notice that this is linked, um, whereas this is just kind of floating here um, and is not linked anywhere in the text. That's the difference between those two options. So let's say I'm unhappy with the way one of these looks or I wanna change the settings. Maybe I think this looks too big. I can go back and edit my page. And I can um, change the settings. So if you hover over the link, you have the option to go to this little gear on the right-hand side, and you can change the size or um, any of the formatting options that you'd like. You can also delete it completely from the page by clicking this X, that little red X that appears, which for some reason right now is not letting me do, but that's how you would get rid of that media object entirely. Um, so for example, let's say I didn't like this video here, it's going to give me a warning, but there it goes. It's gone from my page. <clears throat> so that in a nutshell, uh, let me talk about layout options quickly before I end. Um, once you have media on your page, you do have some other layout options that you could use. 
these gallery options are going to pull from whatever media you're referencing in your page. So if you have several linked media objects in here and you want to display them as like a gallery at the top of the page, for example, you could do that um, by using this uh, media gallery option. Structured media gallery is going to appear like this. So it's really um, a page that's focused entirely on media. But I did want you to know about those couple of layouts. They're not used as often. Um, but if you did have a, a book that was really showcasing a lot of media, you might want to use those. And again, you need to um, have them, those media objects referenced somewhere on the page um, in order for those to work properly. Um, I mentioned earlier the splash and the book splash options. Again, you need a key image for both of these. Um, book splash, again, the way that it's different than the splash is that it's just gonna use the title of your book automatically, kind of no matter what you have in here. Um, so I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna give it a key image. Let's do gargoyle, that seems appropriate. Um, save and view. And so you can see it displays the title of the book at the bottom and the author. Um, and it's just basically a gigantic image. And that's how you're gonna create your book splash page.